Hello and welcome to my channel where we may be dazed but we are not confused. We are going to do a listening to seashells reading for the sign of Virgo. So I'm going to show you three different shells and I'd like you to pick the one that resonates with you the most deeply. Once you've made your selection, please look down below and click on the timestamp that corresponds with the video that you would like to watch. I'll see you on the video. All right, Virgo. So at the root of your message here, there seems to have been some deep, deep disappointment and let down after following a passion of yours. Um, I feel like this was a dream that was deep within your heart and there may have been, you know, maybe some competition and it turned out that you were not selected. You may have put a lot of effort and work into this and just given it your best, really showed up in your best, highest possible way that you could show up and you just were not selected for this. This could be a job that you applied for. It could be a role that maybe you auditioned for. Um, this could even be a relationship in which there was a third party and you were competing for the same person, okay? But whatever it was, I feel as if you did not get selected and this caused you a lot of pain. I feel like whatever this was, you may have tried like three times and the third time was just kind of like the final thing for you. Like it really let you know that this was not going to be it. If you're an actor or an actress, it might have been a role um, that you just kept trying out for. Maybe you, you might have gotten callbacks and ultimately it just didn't work out for you. Um, and it may have been like the role that you just really, really were hoping that you would get, but it just didn't quite come together for you. Um, if this was a relationship, I feel like there may have even been like a mother involved here that may have had the final call that was, you know, maybe in the ear of the other person, maybe on the phone, just kind of putting her, you know, scent in the air about what's what. And this may have had a major influence on how this played out as well. All right. But I'm hearing that Aretha Franklin song. I feel like it's Aretha Franklin and Lauren Hill. It's a rose is still a rose. That's the song that's coming up for you in this. Okay. And also, I feel like because you were true to yourself and you showed up with your best possible, the best way you could show up, and even though you experienced rejection, that, you know, you're going to take so many lessons from this and it's really just going to help you grow spiritually and develop as a person. And moving forward, you're going to take that same energy and take it someplace where it will be accepted. I'm also hearing um, the quote about if you're not accepted to, you know, wipe the dust off your feet and keep going. It's not going to serve you to stick around and try to make your case and prove that you're the best person for it. I feel like in some situations and circumstances that can have a positive effect because it shows how dedicated you are and how you, you never will take no for an answer. But in this case, I feel like it would be overkill and it would actually backfire and make things worse because it's not based in the truth of the situation and the truth of the situation is that you were not the best fit for this even though you gave it your all and you as a person there's absolutely nothing wrong with you there's you have no flaws there's nothing going on it's just for this situation this job this role this relationship it's not a good match because of the people involved I feel like if you switch around this energy and move to, you know, situations that are more conducive to you, and I'm picking up that you actually have other people that think of you as being, you know, their ideal person or their ideal um, actor or actress to fulfill a role or an ideal candidate for a job. It's just you're not quite able to see them because you were so fixated on this one thing that you really, really wanted to get. And that as you ascend and move away from this and keep climbing, you will 
be in the company of these individuals. I feel like they're already around, but you just need some time to decompress from this rejection so that you can be awakened to these opportunities around you. Now, the message that I have here for you in this situation from your seashell is that all is possible. You know, as we were just saying, like your path is opening up and sometimes, you know, rejection is protection. You know, it sounds cliche, but that's true. If you were to go into this with individuals that really don't view you as being good enough or like there's something for whatever reason they have, they don't feel like you're a good match. That just holds you down. That doesn't allow your light to shine. It doesn't allow you to show up with your, um, true self being in a safe space to truly be appreciated because even if you are allowed to come in and be in this role you're not going to thrive and so you want to be a thriver all right in this situation and so your message is that you can choose the path that you want you could keep going on this path and you know be mindful of what it felt like and what it looked like and what you saw when you were in a situation where you were not being accepted. You were not being celebrated. You were being tolerated, not celebrated, and use that as a warning for what to stay away from as you move forward because you have so many roads and avenues opening up for you. You don't want to waste your energy and your time and your talents in places and spaces that don't respect you and don't see you and cannot celebrate you. It would be such a waste of you. Okay. It's also important for you to sever vows of poverty. So this is saying that you don't have to suffer and sacrifice, all right, or self-deny yourself. So I feel like at some level, even though you may have felt like you were pushing and pushing to try to get something to prove how worthy you were, in a way, you were kind of punishing yourself by putting you, trying to put yourself or force yourself into spaces where you didn't fit um, with people who did not see you and could never accept you. And it was because there was this underlying need to suffer or lose out. So you wanted to be your best, highest self and you wanted to show up and go for these things that you knew subconsciously that you would never, ever be treated appropriately. And I feel like you may have had some like past life um, situations where you vowed to, you know, always be in poverty, to always give whatever makes you the happiest, you give it away. Whatever gives you the most fulfillment or gives you a sense of security, you give it away so that you can always be little or lower yourself down or force poverty on yourself. You may be carrying that into this life and it's showing up in the form of you having gifts and talents. And, you know, in biblical um, stories, they talk about talents like a coin. So that is your treasure. That is your rich, your richness, your your wealth, your spiritual wealth, and you're por you're forcing yourself into this form of poverty because you're not allowing it to be multiplied and invested in and to grow. You're just giving it away and being given nothing in return for that. All right. You're giving the best of yourself away. So it's important for you to make connections with people that are conscious connections, people who are going to reflect the beauty that you're reflecting to them, that you're giving off to them. You don't want people who are not going to appreciate who you are. All right. So that's so important. Um, here again, I'm picking up the number eight. I've been getting that a lot for all of these readings. Um, there's some meaning to that. You know, I'm also feeling that the number eight you know, also kind of looks like an infinity symbol. Um, that could mean something for someone, you know, this could be like a repetitive cycle that you're going through as well. Um, I'm also hearing like Ouroboros, that means something for someone as well. So, um, it's important for you to connect with people who can connect with you, who see where you're coming from. They understand what it is that you're doing. Okay. So let's read the message that is here. All right. I surrender all my relationships into unconditional love and ask that the truly nourishing, soul enriching, expansive and nurturing relationships be healed and drawn closer to my heart. I ask that the draining, depleting, destructive, or toxic relationships be drawn out of my life. Through unconditional love, mercy, grace, and my own free will, so be it. 
All right. Imagine that you can breathe golden light in through the front of your body and out through the back of your body. Repeat the process with a rich emerald green light. Don't worry if you can't feel or see the light. Just intend to work with the light and relax. Finally, visualize, perceive, or see a beautiful beating heart with luminous green and gold parrot wings on either side of it. Imagine perceive or feel that there are many other beautiful beating hearts with parrot wings of different colors and they are all flying around together. Enjoy the playfulness of this vision and in your own time. Come back to the here and now. Feel the air on your skin. Notice the temperature of the room you are in and your feet on the floor. All right. So let's see what your peace oracle card is. We have patience. All right, so let's read. Your mind will answer most questions if you learn to relax and wait for the answer. Williams S. Burroughs. There is no hurry. You have all the time in the world to reach your destination. Savor the journey. Do it with style. Sit back and relax a while. Old patterns unravel and reweave. Eternity comes and goes in a heartbeat. Time is not your master. Be patient. Mull over a problem for as long as you need. When there is pressure, draw back. Rushing leads to a loss of time or trust. Be prepared for the long haul. I am cool, calm, and composed. What I don't grasp today will grasp me tomorrow. Information, solutions, inspiration, and love come to me in perfect timing. I am happy to wait for just the right moment. I know it will come. I breathe in, I breathe out, and am at peace. All right. So that is the message that I have for you for seashell number one. If this is your last video, then I may see you in the future. If you're planning to stick around for another video, then I will see you on the next video. All right, seashell number two for the sign of Virgo. So at the root of your message here is a sense of not being honest with yourself or maybe with others or not having clarity about a situation in general. And whatever the case may be, you are moving forward and trying to come into a time of positive change. All right. So I feel like, you know, if you're a part of the group where you were not quite honest with yourself or you were not clear with yourself or others, you have decided that you're no longer going to be in that energy. You want to move forward. You want to um, take whatever it was that was making you feel like you needed to have some dishonesty or cover something in the first place um, and kind of let that go the emotion of it that's tied to it that led to that um i feel like it's like a fracturing of truth to try to hide something to prevent more emotional upset i feel like you're like freezing that emotion in place and trying to let go of whatever that was that made you want to do that um so that you could come into a more positive space um this could be you making a decision to by winter or maybe in December sometime you're planning to make a massive move um I feel like it could be that you might be wanting to let some information out and you know tell some truth this could be a truth that was hidden it could be about another person as well uh, maybe you are helping to hide this truth as well because you didn't want to. Um, I feel like there might have been like maybe some resentment or something even to where you felt resentment towards the person or individuals that this truth was being hidden from. And so you did not want to 
be involved in letting them know there could have even been a sense of like satisfaction that this was happening to this person but I feel like you do have some guilt or you've been enlightened about it um and there I feel like it's like an element of cruelty like you felt like you wanted to be cruel to this person um but something has shifted to where you've been enlightened about a situation and you're kind of letting some of this go whatever the emotion was that caused you to want to be this way towards this person um you're trying to move past it you don't want to participate in that anymore okay that's what i'm picking up really strongly there could have even been i feel like there could be like a pregnancy that was being hidden as well and maybe you knew something about it um you could even okay for some people i'm picking up this could be you know the the mother who was hiding the pregnancy from another person and they are coming out and letting somebody know that you know this did happen all right yeah i'm picking up that this could be you know this could have been a third party situation and there was a lot of competition going on whether all parties were aware of this or not and that in the process of this there could have been some child that was conceived and this was hidden and when this was hidden there was this sense of trying to compete in the background with this child and because things maybe did not go a certain way or things have kind of changed or situations circumstances um and this person might have been where they were operating maybe from a sense of cruelty has been enlightened through this process and they don't feel like it's worth what they were engaging in so for that reason they might be wanting to you know let possibly let the other person know that this was happening um they, they might be letting this person know in december or maybe this happened in december and they want to let this person know so the message that i'm receiving specifically about this situation is to stay focused and hold the course so i feel like you know if you're deciding that if if this is you and you want to let this person know what happened then it's important to be focused and be clear about your intentions in doing so if there was some cruelty in the first place that caused you to want to um this is not to say that there was you know a child was conceived on purpose but in the in the case that there was and it was to try to secure a spot in a relationship that it's important to stay focused on why it is that you're telling the person because if the shift has happened to where you've been enlightened about maybe the folly of this and the impact that it's had on so many lives including your own um, not allowing feelings of jealousy or resentment to creep up and cause it to be done it with destructive intentions and so I'm, I'm picking up it's like look at the bigger picture um it's like looking out like the I'm picking up it's like you're looking out at the stars here and the stars here I would say are like the child the child's life the soul of this child this this child's experience and well-being on this earth and now that they've been conceived and birthed what is important for this you know child now that they're here in this situation where adults may not have been as um clear in their intentions and what they were doing all right and what can you do to make as positive a future and experience for this child as possible all right without them feeling as if they were a burden or unwanted and so on and so in order to do that I'm, I'm feeling that it's important to stay focused and in the process of speaking to this person not to allow jealousy to creep up all right. Um, you know, if this person, you know, especially if this person has moved on and is in a relationship with the person that you were with, maybe they decided to move back to them and they didn't know that there was a child there. Um, try not to allow any kind of frustration that you might have as a result of that and not being in the relationship yourself to create the type of um, energy where you're trying to bring this person down or make them you know, be the salt in their sugar because that did not work for you. Um, I think it's important here to recognize that if this person can have a loving, 
you know, stable relationship and a family unit, which is what you may have wanted the whole time, that you can have that also. And just because the person that you're with, they were not a good fit for you, but there is someone for everyone. And it's just a matter of being in the right vibrational energy to pull in people that match the highest energy that you want to put out. If you're operating in a spirit of jealousy and not being able to have, and you know, coveting other people's relationships, you're going to pull in people who are in that energy as well who are not committed, who are, you know, envious of everything outside of their relationship so that even if you were to get with them, they would always be looking for something else because they're not happy with what they have. It's that lack energy of always trying to see what somebody else has, even when you have something. And so it would not make you happy. And so the other message here is that, um, you know, this is a part of like, I feel like an ascension process for you. You're coming to life after a period of kind of feeling very like having a void inside, feeling very empty. And I feel like there's a lot of that energy that may have led to this happening like this in the first place. But this is you. I mean, it's it takes so much effort and so much energy to pull yourself out of darkness and rejection and after giving so much of yourself and finding like oh well this wasn't enough to pull yourself out of darkness and try to paint yourself back to life and then take the high road and try to be the bigger person and come clean and let this person know what happened because i'm picking up that the other party and this did not let this person know and so there's just an element of deception in and of that in and of itself that this person doesn't even, they're not even aware of the fact that they're dealing with someone who's even capable of doing that in the first place. And so for you to come in there and have to bear that kind of news, you know, it takes a lot to be focused on the purpose and the intention behind that. Um, I'm picking up that it's like mainly because you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you. I feel like part of that resentment before could have been like you wanted to see this person hurting and not doing well because you felt that way. And now I feel like you're past that point or you're moving past that point and you just want to do right. So that if they find out otherwise, it won't be because you didn't come up and say something um, to them about it. All right. So let's see what your sacred rebel card has to say about this the card that you have is come to life okay okay it says lie quietly and play some beautiful music that you love allow it to move through your body as though the sound is pure energy and you are as light as air let the sound feel good let your cells receive the sound energy. Feel the music rattle about in your body as if the sound waves are making your cells vibrate. They are. Let there be life. Get up and move if you wish. If you have emotion arising, be with it, but don't hold on to it. Let it rise and fall as it will. Be in this process as long as feels right for you. Feeling you have had enough indicates that you have completed the healing process for this oracle. You may wish to repeat this exercise daily for several weeks. If so, choose music that feels right for you each time. You can then see the difference that this healing process has on your well-being, your energy levels, and the ease in which you access your intuition and feelings. Also, note the clarity in what you perceive. You might be surprised at what a little music therapy consciously received can do for you. Okay. And your Peace Oracle card is the Timeless Earth. Okay. And when all the wars are over, a butterfly will still be beautiful. Ruskin Bond. Beneath every winter, summer waits to stage its vibrant comeback. Beneath the worry, beyond the hostility, just on the other side of darkness, peace is ever growing, building, waiting to wash over us all. The trees, the stars, every drop of the ocean moves in time with the divine as do you. This too will pass. Slow your pace and resist rushing ahead. There will be another day, 
another chance. Seek firm foundation, solid values or a core message. Have patience. Peace and calm pulse from the depths of the earth, up through the soles of my feet, into my heart and mind. I breathe deeply and slowly and connect with the rhythm of the earth. Steady, stoic, and everlasting, the earth is my home. I am safe. So that is the message I have for seashell number two. If this is your last video, I may see you sometime in the future. If not, and you're planning to check out another video, I will see you soon. All right, seashell number three for the sign of Virgo. At the root of your situation, we have you coming out of conflict or deciding to kind of throw in the towel. You're not going to fight people for anything or compete for anything anymore because there's something bigger coming on the horizon. You see something that's better than this, right? So you may have been in a situation where you were competing for a job. Um, maybe you were competing for some type of position at a job, a promotion, or you could have been competing for some of you, I think, even for a relationship. And this is a large group of people. There's a lot of people here. So, you know, it could just, you could have been you in the crowd. You know, this could also be just you being out in the crowd trying to fight to be seen, fight to be heard, fight to find your place just in general. You know, this could be finding your place in society, finding your place in the grand scheme of things. Like, where do I fit? And feeling as if it's, you know, all these people kind of like on a hamster wheel trying to do the same thing. Um, I'm, I'm picking up like rat racing trying to do the same thing. And this is you recognizing I am no longer going to participate in the rat race. I have so much potential. I feel like there's something more. There has to be something more than this, this, this nonsense, because I don't have peace. I'm always competing. I don't feel seen and I'm scrapping for like the bare minimum. And you I believe are really digging deep and trying to connect with yourself at a soul level to see what it is that brings you the most joy. If you connect to spirit, what is it that you feel that you should be doing? Because I don't feel as if this energy of constantly battling other people who are trying to manifest the same things that you are in the same space and all believing that they're supposed to have it and that they should have it is the correct thing. I feel like you don't believe that spirit would have that many people trying to manifest the same thing in the same space, believing with their heart of hearts that they are the one that's supposed to get that and that that's for them. That's their path. If it's not, there's not enough, you know, just by nature of the fact that all of these individuals feel like this is what they're supposed to be doing. This is their path. This is what they want with the, the most fervent desire of their heart. And there's just this one or two spots for it. That means that somebody is not being true to themselves. And I think that what you're recognizing is that you may have been one of those people. And you recognize that your blessing, your abundance, your increase your manifestation of what it is that you want is going to come from connecting with yourself, your inner nature, and finding out what it is that you really want and making that happen. All right. So your message about this specifically is that you need to follow your bliss. So you might be into astrology um, and looking into that, you might be trying to get your birth chart, you might be doing personality tests, you might be consulting readers to get information about destinies and life purposes and all of that because you're just really tired of, of working in this way. And because of that, 
it's going to help you put your true desires first. I feel like in this energy that you were in before, or you were fighting and competing with all these different people, you felt like you had to kind of lower yourself down to kind of grovel at the feet of whatever it was that you wanted so that you could fit yourself and mold yourself to be there. But now what you're being asked to do is make yourself the most important aspect of your financial future, um, the most important aspect of the energy that you put out. So instead of wasting your energy, fighting other people to get to the thing that you all want, and then being depleted of energy because you spent all your energies and efforts trying to get there, instead of being able to really just enjoy the process of being in that space, that you are going to focus on you. All right. This is a form of self-care. All right. And when you put your energy only into the things that feed your soul and that give you the highest joy and that you know are there for you, then it gives you the energy to do well at that thing. All right. So I feel like you're really focusing on what it is that you feel, not so much what everybody else says or what society says or what family says, or this is the end trending thing. This is what everybody else is doing. So I have to do it too. If I can't compete and win at this, then that means that I'm not A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right. I feel like you are really looking at what do I feel? And based on what I feel and how I see things, that's going to dictate the way in which I move. All right. So the card that we have here is what do you feel? So we're going to read the message for that for you. Okay. All right. It says, close your eyes and relax. Rest your open palms facing upwards on your legs. Imagine that you have a ball of light in each hand. If you find it hard to visualize or feel, you may prefer to draw this process in your journal instead. Focus on one ball of light first. What color or colors does it feel like? What feelings, words, symbols, or qualities does it have? How heavy or light is it? How substantial? What do you feel about it? Do you like it? Turn your attention to the second ball of light. Repeat the investigation or exploration that you did for the first. When you are ready, choose one. There is no wrong or right choice. Just whatever captures your attention, energy, or heart most at this moment. The other may be there waiting for you later on, if it needs be. Or it might be easily released if that most serves your life path and creative journey. You may like to take that chosen ball of light and imagine sending it out into the universe with love. If you have drawn it, you might like to add words, feelings, or colors. When you have finished, simply say, my choices flow easily from my heart and I tread my path with certainty and grace always within the merciful protection of unconditional love. So be it. Okay. And the peace oracle card that I have for you is forever present. Forever present. Okay. Let us know peace. For as long as the moon shall rise, for as long as the rivers shall flow, for as long as the sun shall shine, for as long as the grass shall grow, let us know peace. That is the Cheyenne prayer for peace. Peace is not the absence of war or a momentary relief from suffering. It is eternal. Once, long ago, humanity knew peace, and to peace we shall all return. You can know peace now. It is right here. Embrace it. Deep reflection, remembrance, and gratitude, both negative and positive experience, provides valuable teachings. Don't miss this lesson. You are free to choose differently, safe 
soothing, restorative solitude. I call on my pain, my anguish, my fears. I call on my joy, my gratitude, and my hope. I am safe to express every part of me. I call on the unsung songs and the unspent tears. Come forward now, be re realized, and be free. All right. So that is what I have for you for seashell number three. If this is your last video, then I may see you in the future. If not, and you plan on joining me on another video, then I will see you on the next video.